what is your ultimate goal for uh, the big three? Are you, is it, is it happening now or do you have a different vision uh, or you want to grow it in a different way? We're growing the league. You know, the league continues to grow. We want to be a viable option for ballers um, who find themselves uh, for some reason. You know, with the NBA, it's not always skill level. Sometimes it's a numbers game. There's only 12 spots per team or 15 spots per team. Um, so a lot of, you know, quality, great ballers get left out or um, washed out. So, you know, we want to have that place where you can still play. You don't have to go overseas. You can play in front of your family and friends and fans here in America, uh, professional at the highest level. And how we're growing the sport is uh, we, we're we now uh, selling teams uh, we're in the process of selling teams to owners mm -hmm. and they'll, and they'll put teams in different cities and um, we'll, we'll be able to grow, you know, from there um, and expand to 16 teams in 2024 and so on. What owners are you selling them to? Are you selling to NBA owners or you're selling to people who have the money to buy the team? And, and like, what's the typical buy-in if you don't mind sharing? Well, I mean, NBA owners want to buy in. Um, Several big name owners have, you know, showed a show interest, but because of the bylaw that is in place that, you know, that Adam Silver and Mark Tatum, they can really waive it. They're, they're saying that the law says they can't invest in a competing league. Now, in no way, shape or form, anybody can see that the <laughs> big three is no way Competing. can't compete with the NBA. So we're not competing. So we think that clause needs to be dropped when it comes to the big three. Now, NBA owners can invest in pickleball. They can invest in the TBT league, which is the basketball league. Uh, they can invest in slam ball, which is coming back. Um, but, you know, what makes the big three so special at the end of the day? Um, so we believe that, you know, we're being – basically uh, looked at unfairly by those two or the, the top brass at the NBA um, as a competitive league. And we're not. Who do you, so you're okay. So if you can test this, this law, this, um, this rule that they have created, um, how do you go about doing that? Because you guys aren't competing. Why, why is it that you all are the issue? So how do you contest it? Is what I'm asking. Well, I think you appeal to the uh, players. You appeal to the to the owners to uh, to try to talk to Adam. You know, he's he's the, really the only force that's stopping this great collaboration. Um, the thing is, is we have a place for players in the NBA when the NBA doesn't. So, exactly. You know, why would he stop? You know, he's not going to give Iceman a head coaching job or Rick Barry, you know, or, or Michael Cooper or, you know, and these are guys who went through the NBA, you know, made the NBA what it is. And now they're coaching in the big three as head coaches. And, um, and they're trying to stop the league every way, shape or form. So it's just, it, it really don't make crazy man sense. And so, <laughs> we just want we want somebody to talk some sense into Adam Silver because I think this is going to end up hurting his legacy more than he know at the end of the day. Um, he's going to be known as the guy who tried to stomp out the only black-owned league in America with his former players and coaches. Don't make sense. June 25th, you released a video on Twitter and you called him a club of gate keepers. I want to make sure I have that accurate. Um, specifically mm -hmm. later on in an interview with Sports Illustrated, you said NBA Commissioner Adam Silver um, is in opposition to Big Three. Um, and and you said they're blocking sponsorships from companies like Nike and calls into question antitrust laws. Um, he says, you, you say that you've had contentious meetings with them and you don't understand why. 
Do you know for a fact in terms of proof they they're blocking sponsorships? They're telling people not to sponsor the big three. Yeah, I mean we've had you know people we call uh, you know from the C suites, the C E O C M O S, C O O S, basically tell us that um, they can't do nothing because we haven't worked out. Uh, a, a, a deal or whatever with the NBA. And so, you know, it's definitely them telling these, uh, not only sponsors, but also networks. Um, we had a great deal going that got, you know, somehow stomped out because of our relationship with the NBA. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we we've had people actually tell us you know, I don't want to name names because obviously they're scared of the NBA or nervous about their relationship with the NBA. So, um, you know, they don't want to step on any toes when it comes to that. And so I just think it's, uh, you know, it's not right. It's pretty sad. And uh, it has to be dealt with the best way we know how, which is, you know, making it – um known publicly and then exercising all the rights that we have. It it reminds me of, and it happens all the time, it's big brother, little brother. And when they have the power, most people, everyone wants to deal with the NBA, but it sounds like you're saying uh, for lack of a better term, they're blackballing you. Like they're saying to you, don't deal with them. If you deal with them, you can't deal with us. Is that what you're feeling? That's what I'm feeling that's happening to, you know, some of the major sponsors out there that that uh, deal with basketball. You know, it's not a large pool. It's it's, it's very um, small pool of major Fortune 500 companies that advertise and push their products through basketball. So um, having them talk to one sponsor, let alone multiple, having them talking to one network, let alone multiple. If you think about all the networks that that uh, run basketball, you know, you can count them, you know, mainly on, on, on one hand and you don't need your thumb. So there's a very small amount of, of uh, people we can go to um, to get this product more exposure uh, and to have them going to those people and discarding them from doing it is uh, it's heartbreaking and it got to stop because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, you know, they think they heard nice cube. I'm one guy, you know, I, I, I pay these guys. So they're not hurting me. <laughs> they're hurting is the guys who depend on, this check depend on this exposure to continue their career depend on this game uh the big three uh for for a lot of mental health that we provide just by giving guys who are professional Mm -hmm. athletes a place to play um so we're doing so much for people um so many people um make a living off the big three and earn money when the big three come to town it's just a shame to have such a giant like the NBA using their might to stomp us out. Um, and what's crazy is it's not working, so they really need to stop. Is it personal? Does Adam Silver have a personal it, issue with you? What does he believe about you that would make him think he doesn't want to be in business about with you? I don't know. You know, um, like I said, the meeting we had, it was uh, – we was explaining – to him what we were trying to do. We was actually offering the NBA a piece of the league for free. And um, he basically said, thank you, but no thank you. Um, and then, you know, we was telling him what we were uh, going to do with the league um, and that we thought that him not letting a few players play um, because they were under these, like, uh, promotional contracts with le- with teams mm-hmm. – Mm-hmm. that we thought that went right and that we would fight that. And so 
Um, he probably didn't like how the meeting ended. And um, why didn't he like it? You know, maybe he's holding. Um, because we told him that he wasn't going to kill our league in the womb. Um, and, you know, he probably didn't like that. 